for several years I've been using uh, this Victorinox Swiss Army knife, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, Farmer. These have the Alox scales on them. They also come in silver. They come in a lot of different colors. I got the blue one as a gift and I actually just got this one as a gift also. Uh, this one I've been carrying for several years. This one I've just started carrying and it's going to see a lot of woods time this fall. And this one will kind of sit back up on the shelf for a little bit. But uh, they're the same tool and this one I lost in an auction. And the guy that won the auction ended up sending it to me. Very cool of him. Uh, his name is Brian. He's new to this on Bushcraft USA. So a big shout out to him. Thank you very much. Uh, it'll definitely get some use. A lot of guys use these and have for a lot of years. Uh, they're, they're a great little knife. A lot of tools that are really handy in the woods. And maybe even um, you know to help you out bushcrafting or survival training or whatever it is you're doing. To start with, uh, like most Swiss Army knives, has a nice full size blade on it. It's thin cuts well, easy to sharpen. Uh, next tool, bottle opener, screwdriver, wire stripper. I don't really have much luck with the wire stripper. Um, I don't really use it that much. But the bottle opener I use every once in a while, the screwdriver I use quite a bit. And I'll talk a little bit more about this tool here in a little bit. It's the can opener and it has a smaller screwdriver on it. Like I said, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the two of the big tools on here that I really, really probably use the most is the awl. We use that for drilling and scraping, and then the saw. And these little uh, sack saws, Victorina saws, are sharp, and they're they're made like a saw should be, right? The the back part of the blade is thinner than the kerf and the cut, so it doesn't drag in the material. So if I have a piece of wood like I want to cut here, all right, I want to take it. And I want to split this wood to get into the inside dry stuff. All I have to do is cut that about halfway through. If you're not careful, you can break these. I have seen these break before, so you got to be a little bit careful with them. But I got my cut there, so I'm going to take it and strike it on the ground like this. And what that does opens up a split. I'm going to take it. open up another split and let me get into that dry stuff there. So splitting with the saw pretty easy can be done with the farmer pretty easily. All right let's say I want to get a hole through this piece of split wood that I did here. I'm going to start by thinning this material a little bit not too much because if I thin it too much I run the chance of cracking this wood so I got to be careful when I do it. But the awl is a great tool for this got the awl. I want to start, place it where I want it, just kind of wiggle it back and forth a little bit to get it going. And then I start twisting in the direction of the blade. And it's actually made so it removes material. See that little plug that's coming out of there? I just push on it a little bit. Let's see if I can get some of this out and show you. There. That's all material that's being removed and cut out of it. So it doesn't just poke a hole, it actually drills a hole and removes material. Once you get to this point, I'm going to pull it through and I want to go back through on the other side and widen it out. Now you got to be careful because if you put too much pressure on it, you're going to crack it. Especially something soft like willow, like this is. All right. So it's very easy to get a hole big enough to run 550 cord through or snare wire or anything else. So it works very, very well for that. Another thing I like the awl for is striking my fire steel. I am able here in the, in the Midwest to get uh, marginal materials to go with this. I don't have birch bark, I don't have fat wood, I don't have globs of pine. Uh, I have hard woods out here. So a lot of times we're dealing with grasses, we're dealing with fibrous plants, and uh, they can absorb moisture very, very quick and have no natural accelerants. So what I like to do is be able to scrape big, big chunks of my fire steel off. This fire steel is getting pretty beat up. But you can see those big globs that are on there, and they really, really get hot, and they will really help you start a fire. So this awl is a perfect way to get that set up for that and, and to get set yourself up for success instead of failure. All right? So it works very well for that. The can opener, I want to talk a little bit more about that. 
This can opener is a little bit different than the normal one. All right, so I want to put it on the lip of my material and I push forward and I move it forward. Push forward, move it forward, just like that. Okay, some can openers you pull, go through like this, but these you don't, you push. And you can get a can open, it's number 10 can, you can get this can open pretty quick. So it works real good. I can also use, and you see I've done it here, my awl will actually go through the metal fairly easily. So I want to put it on there, place it, wiggle it back and forth a little bit, and then it will actually remove metal too, make a nice hole for you. See that metal that it peeled off in there? Uh, you gotta sharpen it a little bit every now and again if you're gonna use it on metal, but that's okay. Uh, I can take it and I find the angle that I'm going with, and I like to take it and just run uh, a diamond steel on it, keep it on the original angle that came from the factory. I just stroke a few times. Tell you, you love it. Tell the checks in the mail. You know the rest. All right, the tip of it I can actually take and run at an angle to keep it sharp. It doesn't take much, just a little bit. That'll help you to, to make your purchase point and get in there and start removing that material. One more thing that I can do with this can opener that gets easily overlooked is it's a screwdriver, but it also works very well for getting out Phillips screws. And I've used it on this over and over and over. So once again I just place it in that Phillips screw and undo it. Once again place in the Phillips screw undo it. Piece of cake. Works really really well. Alright, tighten it back up. You can see I got this lanyard on here. Now the reason I have the lanyard I like to keep my knives usually out of my pocket when I'm in the woods. I don't like keeping a lot of stuff in my pocket. So I keep them in a, a belt sheath that I made a long time ago out of a piece of webbing. I have a video on that also uh, with my lanyard for my fire steel on there. It has that lanyard on it so I can pull it in and out easily and uh, I don't lose it all. So I like the bright colored lanyards a lot of times. Uh, that way if you drop your knife it's easier to see it. So great little knife. I couldn't, uh, if, this is the knife that I carry, uh, a pocket knife that I carry, it's my secondary knife. I carry one of my customs most of the time, or a Mora, and then I'll carry this one on the side. So, uh, a Sack Farmer, great knife, I can't really uh, talk, give it enough praise.